seriously, that's all you need to do to get somebody to buy something is put a cat on it. The internet was made for two things, cats and pornography. We've molded everything in the shape of cats. We've got little pushines. This is a pushinosaur. We have tentakitties because we needed octopi cats and Cthulhu cats. We even have hats for cats. This one makes them look like fish. These are imports from Japan that I picked up at Sakurakon. This one makes them look like fruit. So you can actually have an orange cat. There is an orange one right there. I hope you can see that. Oh, that stupid light. Anyway, orange, watermelon, strawberry, banana. Oh no, that's watermelon. And then apple. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure what that one is. Maybe something green. Durian? Is that jackfruit kitty? But this one makes them look like adorable sea creatures and fish. Ooh. So you can put hats on your cats. Hats on your cats. Hats. We have fans. We have ears. And everything. And what is come from this love of cats? Well, let me grab my assistant and I'll tell you. Georgie's here to help me explain. <laughs> this is called a struggle snuggle. And that brings us to our topic, is the emerging language of cat fandom. So what do I mean by the emerging language of cat fandom? Every subculture eventually diverges to a point where they develop their own slang to go with everything that they stand for. The slang develops as a form of communication within a group to show that they are together and one and that they understand each other, but it also can serve to show morals or beliefs that they have that go against the dominant culture around them. And over the years, a lot of different slangs have come and gone and worked their way into the vernacular like dude from surfer culture, cowabunga from turtle culture, thug from the R&B rap culture of the 90s, and many, many other words have just made it into our everyday speech. Well, right now, well, right now, while Kane is wrangling my assistant over there, who isn't happy with the amount of screen time we gave him, <laughs> as we speak on the internet, cat lovers are developing their own language to communicate a few different things. The first one is how much they love their cats. And the second thing is descriptors for their cats. And the other thing is how cats react. So, there's a touch of onomatopoeia that happens in a lot of slangs, and onomatopoeia is a sound that is representative of a noise that's made. And one of the most common cat slang words that you've probably heard is nom. It's onomatopoeia because it imitates the sound that cats make when they are eating. Nom 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 nom. You've probably heard the noise, and you've probably heard the word and not put the two together, but now you know nom, which is one of the oldest cat slang words, is onomatopoeia for eating. So let's go over some physical descriptors of cats that have made it into their own slang. The first one you may have heard and not realized what it meant was chonk. Chonk is a big fat cat. A slonk is a long slender cat. Long slender cat. And then you've got other descriptors like a void. A void is a dark black cat, specifically black. It can't be a brown cat or a gray cat. It has to be a black cat. And then you've probably also heard the terms ginger and tuxedo. Tuxedo cats are those black and white cats that have the white chests and the black bodies. 
sometimes white feet. They're really cute. A Sylvester cat. Old school. And gingers are orange or red cats. They're typically a tabby cat of some sort, but there are some non-tabby orange and red cats. There are also words like floof. A floof is an extremely fluffy cat or a baby cat because baby cats are always really, really fluffy. So if you hear somebody referring to a floof, they're either referring to a cat that's like poof, like a puffer fish, you know, fur everywhere. Or they're referring to an itty bitty tiny baby cat when they're in their like super furry phase. And all you want to do is pick them up and hug them and squeeze them and call them George. Incidentally, Georgie is the name of my cat. That is a coincidence. He came with that name and I kept it because I want to hug him and squeeze him and call him George. Another distinguishing factor that shows that cat fandom is its own emerging culture is a term that they use to refer to their kitty cats, a fur baby. This isn't exclusive to cats, but it definitely developed from cat lovers. Although it has been co-opted by pet owners in general and fur baby specifically denotes a difference in morals from the general population. If you refer to your kitty cat or your puppy as a fur baby, it means you consider them part of the family. They're not a pet. They're not an object. They're not an asset. They're not a whatever. They're actually just as important as your husband or your children or whoever you happen to live with, your roommates. Sometimes they're more important than your roommates. Yeah, I went there. Mm-hmm but that's your fur baby. Another particular term that has kind of developed out of cat culture and pet culture in general is the rainbow bridge. So when I was going to college, I actually went to a lecture that was discussing religion versus science. And one of the questions that was asked after the lecture was, well, don't you believe that pets have a soul? And the theologian who was speaking immediately said, no, I don't believe animals have a soul because in the Bible that I teach, they do not have a soul. Only humans have a soul. I don't believe that. My cat is so smart. He reacts to stimuli. He knows when I'm talking to him. He reacts to things. I can ask him stuff and he will go over to the bowl or he will follow me because I've asked him to. And that is a sign of intelligence and intelligence is a sign of a soul. So the rainbow bridge is a term for when your pets have passed on and they've moved into an afterlife. So pet culture has developed a terminology for the afterlife of their pets, kind of like this shirt. We've gone back to Egyptian standards that animals, animals are like people. Rainbow Bridge, Kane just informed me, which I did not know and did not come up in my research, is co-opted from Nordic culture and that's pretty cool. So keep using that. But it's also a sign that as pet owners we have developed a sense that our animals are more than just objects. They are people. They're members of our family and they go into the afterlife and they follow us and they wait for us. There's some really like, you'll cry kind of comics out there of like cats waiting outside the pearly gates for their owners and stuff like that. Oh, it kind of gets me right here. <laughs> On the Nordic thing, I've actually noticed something recently popping up big and small cats are being referred to as large and small, S-M-O with two dots over it, L and large, L-O, two dots, R-G-E, two dots. And I just think it's kind of interesting how that has slipped into the language as people describing if their cats are big or small. And it's kind of like a form of baby talk almost 
And a lot of this stuff kind of has a baby talk sort of ring to it, but has actually moved past that into actual words. So we're going to go through the other ones that I've discovered so that you have a list and you can understand when your kids are talking about internet cats. We're going to start with Pete's. Pete's are their feet. See how it rhymes? It kind of hits that like baby talk level where you're not sure if it's just adorable or if it's a mixture of the word paw and foot or if it's just adorable. I, I can't, I love that word. I just can't even get away from calling it that. And then there are toe beans, which are the little pads on the foot of the cat. And the toe beans, they look like beans. They look like little pinto beans on some cats and other beans on other cats, but they do look like beans. So if you hear somebody talking about toe beans or beans for short, that's what they're speaking about. Laser beans. You've seen those photos of cats where the light's hitting them and their eyes are reflective because cats can see at night. They have great night vision. Well, that's partially because they have retinas that are reflective and have these little mirror sub like surfaces in their eye. Well, when you shine a light, don't do that. Do not shine a light in your cat's eye. But when light hits them at night, they reflect. And those are laser beams and they are charging. <laughs> then there are bleps and mlems. Mlems. I can't say that word. M L E M. Correct? Thanks, Kane. Mlem. Mlem. Anyway, bleps are when the tongue comes partially out of the mouth. And mlems are when the tongue is almost fully out of the mouth. Anyway, you just needed to see my tongue. One of my favorite newest ones that's come up are pantaloons. Pantaloons are cats that are only fluffy on their rear portion, their legs and their butt, and they're really fluffy there and they're not fluffy anywhere else. Sometimes their tail. And people have been referring to those as pantaloons because they look like pantaloons. <laughs> or, um, yeah, no, they, they look like pantaloons. It's really adorable. <laughs> I, I, I may or may not love cats and think everything about cats is amazing. Here's some extra credit stuff. A loaf is a position that a cat takes when it's sleeping, where its paws are usually curled up underneath its chest. So it kind of looks like a loaf of bread. Making biscuits is when they do that thing where they're kneading with their paws. It's time to make the biscuits making biscuits. Zoomies. Zoomies are when they go run around like crazy, like mad at 3 a.m. when you're trying to sleep and they run across your head and wake you up. That's called a zoomie. It's got a really cute term for something that can be super obnoxious. Tortitude. Tortitude is a description of the attitude that tortoiseshell cats are stereotyped to have. Unfortunately, I have met a lot of tortoise shell cats that um, do live up to that particular terminology. They are one people cats or no people cats and they just live in your house or no other cat cats. Like, tortitude is a thing. You look it up on the internet, you'll see torties being mean. But not all of them are mean. I've met some nice ones. And my parents had a really, really nice one. And she mellowed with age. At first she was a real firebrand. Oof. She had tortitude in spades. But that was a whole lot of other slang that uh, I'm not prepared to explain to you. And then there are compound slang terms like I fits, I sits. That means I don't care how big or small this box is if I can get my ass in it. I'm going to sit in it. And so when you hear somebody talking about a cat, I fits, I sits, it means that they're going to sit there no matter what. There's also the danger zone. The danger zone is the belly. 
you want to pet it. It looks so soft. Sometimes they're laying on their tummy, inviting you to pet it. And then as soon as you stick your hand there, it's like, ah, what did I do? It's the gom jabbar. But yeah, just remember, fear is the mind killer. It is the little death. I will let it pass through me. And <laughs> yeah, you get the picture. So uh, don't rub their tummy unless you know that the cat is friendly to that because that is the danger zone. Danger. High voltage. And here is one more extra credit. Have you ever heard of a murder mitten? Murder mitten. Murder mittens are the large adorable paws that are on big cats like uh, tigers and panthers and cheetahs. Those are murder mittens. They're adorable and you want to touch them and poke their beans, but you can't because um, they might get overly excited and eat your hand. So don't touch the murder mittens. So that just touches the basis of this new emerging slang, this new emerging dialect maybe. Who knows what it'll develop into in 10, 15 years. I mean, we've always loved cats. Back to the Egyptians and forward to Peter Chris in Kiss, you know, and the great cat. I know a lot of musicians with cat names for some reason and on to Garfield and today with Cheeseburger and all of our memes and all of the lovely cat things that we do. Go out there, pet some cats, as long as you're not allergic. So that is the weird language developing out of cat fandom. I have a little bit of tortitude. <laughs> if you like this video, if you're curious about language, science, murder, 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 or anything just weird in general, make sure you get weird while we get weird here at Let's Get Weird on Looking for Geeks. Like, share, subscribe, click the little bell so that you get notifications when we post a new video, and leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instaspam, I mean Instagram, We're on the internet. Find us. I do what I want. Zoom.